What's up, everybody? It's Man of Low Moral Fiber here. My name's Luke, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Flacker as a part of my Does It Suck series. The Flacker is the legendary Torg shotgun, and it is a very interesting weapon and one with a very bad reputation. We can see there on the card that it says it has five projectiles and an accuracy of one. However, if we fire this weapon, we can see that those are kind of misleading as the weapon has a fixed spread pattern where we definitely do not see five distinct projectiles. Instead, we see a number of explosions that are too many to count without slowing the video down. And they do occur a distance from the player depending on the angle at which the weapon is fired and the environment in which it is fired into. Obviously in here where there is a ceiling, you'll notice some of the projectiles do seem closer clustered than if we shoot it out here into the open air. And so this weapon definitely has a sweet spot and a fairly steep learning curve because of the unique behavior of its firing pattern. Now we're going to use it here in the Washburn Refinery after we first briefly take a look at the other stats we can see that the fire rate and reload speed are both abysmal at 0.5 and 3.9 respectively and it effectively has a three shot magazine having a magazine size of 12 and consuming four ammo per shot and obviously um, this weapon has like I said a very very bad reputation however I do believe the weapon has potential as you can see there um, when used properly this weapon is very effective and we're going to take a look at it here in the Washburn Refinery and then determine whether or not we think this weapon sucks uh, based on the performance that we notice. So let's put that up there. Um, keep in mind I'm no flacker veteran and uh, what we're going to see in this video isn't necessarily indicative of its uh, top or maximum potential, um, but it should be somewhat uh, evident when using this weapon that, or when watching this video I hope, that it is at least a weapon with potential. Let's go ahead and kill this hot loader here. Um, I was hoping to get more enemies clustered with it because I believe the weapon is obviously most effective when um, you have multiple enemies grouped up, obviously. And uh, you can see there that it's really doing a number on these enemies that we do have grouped up. This should be a fairly funny usage scenario with these two enemies um, in this room here because obviously with that ceiling or I guess I could move him further back in there now. Um, with that ceiling, they stand to take a lot of damage. You can see that uh, it really tore up that bull, bull loader once I pulled him into that uh, tight quarters area there. Obviously our turret is gone at this point. We have three enemies facing us, two gun enemies and one melee enemy. They're not the most difficult in the world. None of them, ooh, something happened there. None of them seem to have the most uh, powerful weapons, but obviously I just took a lot of damage, so we kind of have to uh, give them their space for this brief moment. Let's move them together here and uh, then I'm going to begin attacking them. Now that my turret's out, I'm a lot less worried about surviving. Took major damage there and I don't know what it was from. It will probably be pretty obvious to those of you watching the video. And now I look forward to seeing what caused that much damage to me there. Either way, um, I guess it's important to note that we got down to 152 ammo in that particular situation. But keep in mind I was using quasars to kind of group my enemies up a little bit so that we could uh, get the maximum effectiveness out of our um, flacker. Now obviously the flacker isn't necessarily um, ammo inefficient. However, if you miss a lot of shots with it, it can be. At the very least, it is ammo hungry, I would say. So let's put our turret down there, wake this guy up, break line of sight with him, and then see where he kind of lands um, so that we can uh, really try to use our flacker effectively on him. Almost killed him in one magazine there. He started moving uh, before our third shot really started to go off. And because of that, um, we didn't kill him in one magazine. But as you can tell, it's definitely possible. Anywho, we'll hit up these three chests here, and uh, then we'll be moving forward. Cool. So now we have um, plenty of shotgun ammo still at 168 rounds, and we still have 10 grenades. Obviously, at this range to the next enemy, the um, flacker is absolutely useless. Perhaps the only torque shotgun that could get to him would be the um, sword explosion or possibly the carnage. Anywho, let's move this guy real close to a backstop here and uh, try to hit him with this. And you can see there that when an enemy is kind of close to a wall or something like that, the flacker can definitely be used very effectively. The next two enemies will try to kill in the open air, however. So let's draw them together now um, into this middle. And, um, oops, didn't really get them where I wanted. There we go, that's a little bit better. And uh, now we can kill both of those there in two shots. Almost managed to kill them in one shot. So that's pretty damn effective. Now we're going to be fighting um, some running exploder enemies, which are difficult to hit at best with the uh, flacker. So um, that's interesting to note, you know, that the charge type enemies uh, 
are not going to be easily dealt with with the Flacker, whether that be a running Psycho or anything else. Um, but they can be mitigated in their effectiveness and their ability to dodge Flacker bullets by using the turret, um, you know, to kind of distract them and such. Anywho, we're going to get real enemies spawning now, and we'll be able to determine how the Flacker does against them. So we've got an Exploder here, not a big deal. Um, this guy, always fairly dangerous, the bull loaders are, with their uh, weapons. So um, we'll kind of uh, try to draw both the bull loader and the uh, gun loader over there, but the gun loader did not get drawn over because, for whatever reason, his grenade drawing animation seemed to have kept him uh, out Ah, that's terrible. Seem to have kept him out of um, the Singularity Nova or their Singularity effect there. Um, so that really sucked for us. Let's go ahead and put our turret down. And um, then we'll draw some enemies over here. And uh, really try to kill, uh, you know, multiples of them at once. Cool. So it looks like we dealt with all of those enemies fairly effectively. I do want to withdraw the turret now because there are only two more enemies, and obviously upon killing one of them, the badass loader will spawn, and for that we most likely do want our turret to be active. So um, let's draw them together like this, and, uh, you know, hit them with the flacker and kill both of them at once, hopefully. And we did that, so now um, we will have the turret active and be facing only the badass loader at once. So I'm going to put my turret up there so that... Um, you know, he's kind of forced to attack it and won't see me and stuff. All right. Cool. So now he seems to kind of be going after that. He shouldn't be doing the stomp or anything because it's not near close enough to him. And uh, with him concentrated on that, we should be able to deal good damage to him. With him being down there, um, it's really kind of funny because shooting downwards with the flacker is possibly when it is at its most effective. You can really see how many of the uh, explosions were probably catching him right there. I guess we should try to withdraw this turret now, not that there's much time on it left, but should save a little bit of cooldown time for us. And I'm also going to go back and acquire the ammo from uh, these boxes over here because I think that uh, they'll most likely be effective for us, or at least helpful. We are down to 92 flacker rounds, which isn't huge. Keep in mind there is a total shotgun capacity of 220 rounds, so we are significantly below halfway. Anywho, let's uh, grab that, and that puts us above halfway, or half ammo capacity, and we'll move into the next room at this time. Now, this next room can be quite dangerous, but I think at this point we've proven that the Flacker is at least viable, um, if not potent and powerful. Um, it's done very well here so far. So, let's drop down. Um, I'm definitely going to open this little uh, doorway. Like I said, I am no Flacker expert, so uh, we're still learning this thing. I'll leave that slag barrel. Um... These guys both appear to have fairly damaging weapons. So let's uh, go ahead and put our turret out there, distract some of them, break line of sight with them. And uh, then we'll kill this gun loader here. And then we'll say attack um, this loader or something. If we can get these two together, um, that definitely works out in our favor. Whoa. Oh, I was going to say, where did that gun loader go? I didn't think he got caught in that blast, or nor was he slagged. But um, he's right there, so we'll finish him off. Ooh, I didn't expect that one to fire that at me. Perhaps I walked right in front of the turret. I'm not entirely certain. Either way, we got a dangerous hot loader dead, and so that's a good thing. And, uh, in fact, there's another dangerous hot loader right here. But I had Onslaught active, so we were able to kill him pretty damn quickly as well, especially since Battlefront was coupled with that. All right, so we'll withdraw our turret here while we evaluate the threats ahead. Um, it's just a gun loader and an R loader right now. Um, so we'll drag them our way a little bit. All right, um, so looks like our first flacker shot on that guy did a bit of damage, and that second one was able to finish him off. We've almost got our turret back, but uh, we are getting low on ammo, so I wanted to uh, get a little bit more. Now we have plenty of ammo. Keep in mind that the game does wait uh, drops for you, you know, if you're low on only one specific type. And so that was what happened there, I would say. All right, so um, we have done well there, and we'll move the turret forward now. Um, don't need to use its entire duration back there, obviously. Um, got a one hit there on that uh, particular gun loader, so that was good stuff. Um, anywho, let's talk about why the Flacker might be so, or why it might have such a bad reputation. Um, the Flacker, obviously, when the game came out, was probably one of the most acquired, or at least easy to acquire, legendaries. Um, the Warrior, the 
uh, boss who drops this weapon frequently as part of its drop pool. It drops a uh, number of different legendary items. Um, you know, was one of the most farmed in the game at the time, the warrior. And um, obviously, he's the boss of the main campaign. So pretty much everyone fought the warrior, you know? Pretty much everyone battled the warrior. Um, that wasn't uncommon for pretty much everyone who played the game. And with the warrior having a virtually guaranteed drop chance, there's a 20% chance that anyone who played through this game once found the flacker. And beyond that, um, I would say that the only legendary item that is routinely found more than the flacker in the early game, or in the game's early lifespan, I'd say, was the Flame of the Firehawk Shield, which was a guaranteed quest reward that was given um, very deliberately by a character that uh, most people were probably a fan of and accepted most likely. So the Flame of the Firehawk, I'd say, was probably the most acquired legendary weapon, but then the Warrior's Drop Pool was, you know, not far down the list after that. And as a result of that, um, a lot of people were getting the Flacker um, very early in the game and didn't really know how to use it. Obviously, it does have a high learning curve. And versions that aren't the casual version, much like the Orphan Maker or the Slow Hand, um, that don't have that uh, extra two projectiles are not very good. And so the combination of this weapon being very, very poor with other builds and like other builds of the gun I'm talking about here. Um, obviously, this is the one with that foregrip accessory. Um, so other versions of the gun without that foregrip accessory were definitely not as potentially good. But the main item people were looking for from the warrior at the time was the conference call, the legendary Hyperion shotgun. And um, obviously, the legendary Hyperion shotgun at the time was very, very popular and favored because of its abuse with the B shield. Um, I need to back away from this guy real quick so that he quits targeting me. Um, and it was used, you know, extensively with the B-Shield as a result of that. Um, hopefully Pervy doesn't target us and we can uh, kind of attack him here. Cool, so we'll kill Pervy. Um, that's good stuff. But yeah, so people were looking for the conference call, which obviously had huge B abuse. For those of you who don't know, any weapon that listed multiple projectiles on the card would get that many B boost. Um, the conference call was by far the easiest weapon to abuse with that particular glitch. And as a result, people really, really liked the conference call. And getting the flacker was not what they were aiming for when they were farming the warrior. And they might even say, oh, the flacker sucks because it couldn't do what the conference call and B did. Um, one of the things that I think is kind of funny about the weapon's um, somewhat unique history is the fact that, uh, you know, obviously the... Uh, conference call and B don't function in that way anymore and one of the things that makes the flacker very popular among some specific groups of people is its ability to be used as a glitch uh, causing or glitch accessory um, you know kind of like a glitch weapon or a glitch accessory obviously uh, people utilize the ability to quickly switch to another weapon in order to um, in order to make all the flacker projectiles or explosions do the damage of, say, a rocket launcher like the Nukem or Ahab. And then beyond that, um, you know, you can obviously use it at the same time as Salvador with one of those weapons for the same effect. And it is very good at that and possibly one of the highest DPS things in the game, even though it is entirely not legitimate and due to, you know, a glitch in the game. Anywho, um... It's ironic in my mind that possibly one of the reasons why the Flacker wasn't very well liked when the game came out is because of a glitch that made it look bad, and now one of the reasons why it is used is because of a glitch that makes it look good. But even without abusing glitches, without glitches in mind, the Flacker is still a very viable weapon that I would say definitely doesn't suck, and it only has such a bad reputation because of its, um, you know, connotations that it provided early in the game's life cycle and it was never really able to shake that reputation despite the fact that it is by all accounts a very viable weapon or maybe not by all accounts by all accounts of people who've actually used it a uh, viable weapon and it can definitely be used in a lot of different scenarios obviously here in the washburn refinery it had no trouble working through the majority of these enemies even when we got to the fourth player hell scaling so um, overall, I would say that the Flacker definitely doesn't suck and is probably among the most misunderstood weapons in Borderlands 2. So as always, guys, I thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. If you haven't yet taken the time to subscribe, please do so. I'd appreciate that. Otherwise, I do hope to catch you next time. Bye, guys.